Welcome to Life with David. I'm David, and did you know my Raspberry Pi Pico is doomed? That's right, it can run the classic 1990s game, Doom. This is old news, but since I'm hoping to add bare metal USB I.O. to the RP2040, I figured I had to verify that the hardware works before I could try any software mods. So, why don't you join me as we have some real fun and use the Pico to play games? Porting Doom to all kinds of devices has been the hacker's go-to challenge for decades. The standard joke is that you could run Doom on anything, including a toaster. While that might be a fantasy, Graham Sanderson has come pretty close. In 2022, he ported Doom to run on RP2040 at $1 each, probably one of the cheapest platforms ever. Graham, also known as Kilogram on the RP2040 forums, is one of the masterminds of the RP2040 C, C++ SDK. As part of his work, he developed the RP2040 video capabilities that I had demonstrated in Episode 6 of the PIO Chronicles about two and a half years ago. Graham's port of Doom not only utilizes his VGA video routines for output, but also a tiny USB for keyboard input. Since I'd like to implement the Pico's USB port for input and output in lieu of a UART, I thought that I would try to make Doom work on my Pico. I started by dragging out the VGA video breadboard that I built in Episode 6. For more information, please see Episodes 6 and 12 of the PIO Chronicles. I'll leave a link in the description below. As a refresher, the VGA video interface is a set of three 5-bit DAC resistor networks, one for each of the red, green, and blue channels. The horizontal and vertical sync signals are controlled by GPIO 16 and 17. I plugged the VGA cable into an old VGA monitor I had kicking around. Of course, Doom would be complete without its great soundtrack. Graham's port implements PCM I2S audio. I purchased the PCM 5102 module from Amazon. I'll leave a link in the description below. The module must be configured before it will work. There are five jumpers that need to be set. It took me a while to find this info, so to make it easier for others, I'll leave a link in the description below. There's one jumper on the component side of the board which ties SCK to ground. That needs to be jumpered using a bit of solder. There are also four sets of jumpers on the back side of the board that tie FLT, DEMP, XSMT, and FMT either high or low. We want to tie FLT, DEMP, and FMT low and XSMT high. This can be a little fiddly just use a clean, fine-tipped soldering iron. Afterwards, clean the jumper area with isopropyl alcohol, and don't forget to check for bridging. This module is connected to GPIO 26, 27, and 28, as well as plus 5 volts and ground. The module uses an 8th inch jack to connect to computer speakers. Unlike implementing video and audio on the Pico, USB is much more challenging. Out of the box, the Pico USB provides power and will download code into flash memory using the built-in bootloader ROM. MicroPython configures the Pico USB as a serial interface using a COM port on a host PC. The C C++ SDK incorporates tiny USB to provide either USB device or host capabilities. Graham's port of Doom configures the USB as a host to communicate with a keyboard. I've been told that the USB is very complex. I need to understand both the hardware and software sides of USB before I can determine if it can be used on a bare metal Pico. Let's start with the hardware side. As mentioned earlier, the default configuration of the Pico is as a USB device. What does that mean? USB is a two-way serial communications protocol between one host and up to 127 slave devices. The host always initiates a request for information from a specific device, and then the device immediately answers. A device never initiates communications except to tell the host that it has joined the network. The hosts and all the devices are connected together through a network of hubs. The hub for the host is called a root hub. 
USB cables have been designed to ensure correct connections are always made. Typically, the downstream connectors on hubs will have female USB-A ports. The upstream ports on devices will have a female connector of a different size, for instance, a USB-B or a micro USB. The Pico has a female micro USB port, which, as mentioned before, is typically the configuration for a device. However, since I want to use the Pico as a host, I'll need a special adapter to convert it to a female USB-A conductor. This one came with my old cell phone, which had USB on-the-go capabilities. This allows me to plug the Pico into the upstream port of a powered USB hub and act as a limited host. I'll plug the keyboard into a downstream port on the hub. The powered hub will provide power for both the Pico and the keyboard. Before I insert the Pico into the breadboard, I added a couple wires to test points 2 and 3. That will allow me to monitor the data positive and data minus lines of the USB network. With that, I should be ready to try Doom. I first opted for installing the pre-compiled UF2 file from Kilogram's GitHub releases repository. I'll leave a link in the description below. I downloaded the file to my PC and then downloaded it to the Pico with the standard boot select button using a USB cable from my PC to the Pico. After the file was downloaded, I disconnected the Pico and reconnected it as a host to the upstream port of the USB powered hub. I was actually surprised that everything worked just like it was supposed to. Again, I reminded myself that I'm not very good at gaming. I took the opportunity to look at the USB waveforms. I connected my scope to the D plus and D minus lines I brought out earlier. USB uses differential signals to convey packets of information. Ben Eater has an excellent video about interfacing a USB keyboard. I'll put a link in the description below. For this setup, the host queries the network about every one millisecond. However, most of the time it just sends a NAC or negative acknowledgement, meaning that the host isn't ready to accept data. I assume that's because Doom queries the keyboard much slower than once per millisecond. Now that I know this hardware configuration works, I'll increase the difficulty of this project a bit by compiling the UF2 file on my PC from the source files. Well, at least that's what I first thought. I downloaded the Doom file from GitHub, but it wouldn't compile since I needed SDL2. So I downloaded SDL2, but I couldn't figure out how to incorporate SDL2 into the build. Finally, I added the paths into the CMake statement, only to find out that I needed SDL2 Mixer and SDL2 Net. So I added them and finally got this past the CMake stage, but then it wouldn't end make. Finally, I had enough of trying to do it with Windows. I decided to compile Doom using Linux as recommended. Since I just got my Raspberry Pi 5, I added all the tool chains and after an hour or so, it was ready to go. I installed SDL2 using sudo app git install lib sdl2-dev. Then I created an RP2040 build directory, navigated to it, and used CMake with the paths to the SDK and the Pico Extras directory included. The make process took less than three minutes. It took longer to find the UF2 files. Once located, I copied them into the Pico and, just like that, Doob started. I swapped over to the USB hub with the keyboard and I was able to play the game. Now I have the disassembly of map files, so I should be able to reach my final goal to understand how USB can interface with the game. All I have to do is look at the files and, well, they need standard I.O. in the C, C++ SDK to work, but I'm, I'm trying to do it without the SDK, so I have to write a standard I.O. in assembly and... Well, that didn't go well. Everyone said USB was complicated, and it is, especially when trying to do it bare metal style. All of a sudden, using a $10 TTL to USB converter doesn't seem so bad, especially when it saves cranial matter from being sprayed all over the place.
Thanks for joining me today. This time we installed Doom on the Raspberry Pi Pico, first with a pre-compiled UF2 file, and then by building it ourselves on a Raspberry Pi 5. We added I2S audio and used the Pico's USB port in host mode to add a keyboard. I had hoped to get clues on how to use tiny USB for other bare metal programs from the disassembly listing, but all I discovered is I can't use tiny USB without the C, C++ SDK. Oh well, I guess I'll stick with the TTL to USB adapter for now. Now that I have a bit more experience with bare metal on the RP2040, maybe I can revisit VGA graphics. I know this is also old news, but I'd really like to get a better picture than my last attempt, so stay tuned. If you like this video or you think someone else might, please give it a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. The more likes this video has, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Also, please leave a comment or suggestion for things to do. I hope to do more of these videos, so please subscribe and click on the bell for notifications of new videos. Let's get together next time for another day in Life with David. See you soon.